They're not cosplay gangsters. And he just flies through the air. His feet were going like Michael Jordan. So when I was getting the masseuse booked into the Tulsa County Jail, like we were waiting in line behind some cops who were bringing in defendant, and she asked me if uh, we could step off to the side. She whispered into my ear that she knew of a guy went by the street named Lucky. She said that Lucky had a pretty good reward on his head. He, she gave me his real name, which I promptly forgot. She told me that he was living with a girl in the Town Square apartment complex, which is a high crime area in North Tulsa. In fact, in 2021, there's been at least two homicides at that complex. I got her booked into the jail, got back out to my car, started making quick notes. I didn't want anyone inside the jail to see me uh, seemingly getting information from someone that was going to be incarcerated there. It wouldn't be a good idea for her to be tagged as a snit inside a jail. So I made my note. I had the street name Lucky, the Town Square Apartments. The next day I went over to Bill's office, his bail bond office, and asked him how I would go about finding a criminal's record if all I have is a street name. So he showed me how to do that. Lucky had been in and out of the Oklahoma Department of Corrections for various and sundry things, primarily for violence, assault and battery on a police officer, shooting with intent to kill, uh, assault with a deadly weapon, few minor drug charges. It was a very frequent thing when I looked up the various cases that prosecution witnesses would decide not to make themselves available to testify against Lucky. So Bill helped me put a full legal name and a date of birth with the nickname Lucky and help figure out which bail bondsman in the area may have had his bond Bill made the initial contact. Lucky was wanted. He had a $75,000 bond, which meant if I could track him and find him and bring him into custody, $7,500. It wasn't too bad because most of the people that I was getting from Bill were two or three hundred dollars up to five or six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars, something like that, which wasn't bad, all things considered. Beats working. But Bill did point out to me that Lucky had a history of violence. He was also a top guy of a pretty powerful prison gang. Lucky had been in and out of the system. He didn't seem to have too much of an aversion to doing crimes that would result in serious time. Bill introduced me to the bail bondsman. The bail bondsman said, hey, this guy is dangerous. He had sent another bounty hunter after him. I think that guy went by the name Cowboy. Cowboy went around checking references and just beating the streets because he didn't have any solid information really to find Lucky. So I guess word got back to Lucky and when he pulled up at whatever location Lucky was staying, Lucky came out with a gun and shot up Cowboy's car. Now, Cowboy had a bit of a felony record himself, so he couldn't carry a gun. He carried pepper spray, and I think that's about it. In light of all the, the violence that I was seeing on official and semi-official documents and stuff that I was getting from his bail bondsmen, things that I was getting from the street cops, it was pretty apparent that Lucky either was a very dangerous character or he just was given that reputation. And uh, as I said in a prior video, there were no YouTube channels about bounty hunting. There were no web Website that I needed to approach Lucky in a more thoughtful, more serious, more diligent manner and be prepared for violence. And again, I still had no partner. I had no one watching my back. I sure could have used some backup on Lucky though. Now, going off of the information that I had gotten from the chatty masseuse, I had an idea of the area where Lucky should be found. I didn't have his girlfriend's name. Lucky was just about 5'7", maybe 145 pounds soaking wet, just a regular old white kid notable characteristics about him he had a, he had a very hard look in his eyes which you can never count on that as an identification feature but lucky had on on the left side of his neck it was about the size of a half dollar he had a four leaf clover tattoo in green and right under that was his name lucky so i went over to the town square apartments didn't know exactly which door lucky was hiding behind in that area a guy that looked like lucky was going to stand out so i did surveillance over 
several days, finally had a little kid. And I said, hey, where's the white dude that they call Lucky? And the kid pointed at the building, also found out that she had a job. When she would leave for work about five o'clock in the morning, Lucky would stay there with the kids till they would get on the school bus. Hope was that he was staying there at the apartment. And they were in an upstairs apartment, saw her get in the car. She was backing out of a parking space. Uh, a guy stuck his head out of the apartment door and hollered something to her. She shouted something back to him and proceeded to go on her way. I was pretty sure that the guy who stuck his face out of the door would be Lucky, my $7,500 payday. So I sat there staring at the apartment, watching the door, seeing if anybody would come or go. And finally the kids came out, go get on the school bus. So my hunch, and it was just a, a complete gut feeling, Lucky's in the apartment, he's by himself. I went up, I had checked around the building to make sure that I knew where the windows are. The only way in or out was either through a window or the front door. Went up, knocked on the door, the door opened just enough, and there's my guy standing right there. My eyes went right to the four-leaf clover, and as soon as I saw that it was him, I pushed through the door and grabbed him by the throat, and we went back through the living room, and the fight was on. Lucky, as I said, was 5'10", maybe on a good day if he was wearing extra thick socks, and he couldn't have been over 150 pounds. I was 230 at the time, I'm 6'4". So the size advantage was mine. However, Lucky knew how to fight, and in the prison, I guess with his position, he probably didn't have to do much of the, the physical stuff himself, but we wrestled around there in the house. You know, we had gone from the floor up against the wall. Bad rookie mistake. It could have turned out really bad, but I don't decide to cuff Lucky until he's you know doing the old school hands against the wall, feet spread out, and I get one arm cuff as I'm bringing it back. This guy twists and turns and, and he's headed out the door. I've never been accused of being extremely fast. So he got away from me. I, now I've got a wanted felon running around with a handcuff on one wrist. Lucky goes out the front door and he is at the top of the stair landing and he just flies through the air. His feet were going like those old videos of Michael Jordan. His feet would pump through the air and how he would keep his air and Lucky did the same damn thing. He flew over those steps, didn't touch a step, landed just perfect at the bottom and he took about two or three steps and turned around and I was coming down the stairs. I wasn't getting airborne. I'm going sideways down the stairs as quickly as possible. Lucky gets out. He just gets out into the parking lot. He turns over his shoulder, I guess, to look back at me to see if I'm coming. And while his head was turned, bam, he ran right into the side of a lady driving through the parking lot in her minivan. He folded like origami and he's just laying there in a heap next to her van. She stops and gets out. By this time, I'm on top of him and I go, I'm a bounty hunter. Get out of here. She got back in the van and just took off. Lucky was stunned from the impact of the side of the, I think it was a Dodge Caravan caravan but he hit that thing man boom it was like a moth on a windshield he was stunned pretty good i got it you know got on top of him on the ground got him immobilized got his other arm behind him got him handcuffed properly got him up to his feet he was just wearing jeans uh no shirt no shoes and normally i would have we'd gone back up to the apartment grabbed his shirt or something like that but i wasn't going to do that with this guy i wanted to get him in the car over to the jail as quickly as possible we get in the car and i just put him in the passenger seat. So I've got Lucky buckled into the passenger seat. He's handcuffed behind him. We pull out of the apartment complex and we don't get maybe two or three blocks and I, I start second guessing how well I searched him. I just did a quick search up in the apartment. So we pulled off into a parking lot. I got him out of the car, put him on the ground and did a better search and Lucky had this knife. I completely missed it in the apartment. Very serious mistake but I've had this knife ever since. Every time I look at it, it makes me think of Lucky. So after after I uh, get the pocket knife out of Lucky's pocket, and I stick it in my pocket. My mind clicked back on one of the police reports that I had seen. The cops had Lucky in custody. They had him handcuffed and that he had gotten one side of the handcuffs unlocked while he was in the police car and then they had to fight him in the police car. I think that's one of the uh, assault on a police officer charges that he caught. I started thinking this guy must be a really good escape artist. The police report had indicated that they recovered a handcuff key. Lucky had his own handcuff key. This is the one Lucky used to carry right here. That, that's Lucky's handcuff key. In the back of the waistband of his jeans, he had put a little pocket 
so that he could slide a cuff key in there. Another little token reminder, the $7,500 didn't last very long, so I didn't get too many memories off of that. But the pocket knife and the cuff key, you know, and he just started talking to me like, not like we were friends, but he wasn't yelling or screaming or anything like that. In the apartment, there was a lot of, a lot of cursing from both of us. Uh, a lot of threats were thrown for both of us. When I was first getting him off the ground after I got him properly cuffed, uh, after he ran into the van, almost like a different guy. He was real calm and almost cordial and friendly. And uh, he said he appreciated that I didn't just go ahead and shoot him. And I said, well, I didn't really have a reason to shoot you as far as I could tell. And uh, he said, well, you heard about Cowboy. So he knew that the Cowboy was the other bounty hunter. He said, oh yeah, I shot that motherfucker car up. And didn't seem necessarily bragging about it, but he wasn't shy about it. I said, yeah, I, I heard about that. So I wasn't gonna give you a chance to shoot at me if there was any way I could, which would explain why I went through the door and immediately grabbed him by the throat and we went to the ground. Because the way I figure out it, if, if a guy has already got the history of violence, he's shot at at least one person. He said, you know, I, it's nothing personal. I didn't I didn't fight you to hurt you. You know, we both got kind of scuffed up. Uh, Lucky got a bloody nose from where he kissed the van, tore a hole in my jeans when we were on the ground in the parking lot. He was scuffed up. I was a little scuffed up. So I said, well, why were you, why were you fighting? You've been to prison before. He goes, oh, I don't have any problem with prison. I just wanted to make sure that anybody that caught me was going to earn their money. I'm not going to make it easy on somebody. He was very proud to tell me about his position in the gang. And these guys, you know, when I talk about gang, they're not cosplay gangsters. They're not wannabes. These guys have a, a very well-earned reputation for violence. Again, on the street, inside the prison system, they have no problem no problem at all ordering and committing acts of violence and it doesn't matter if it's on law enforcement people from other gangs corrections officers doesn't matter if they want to get you they'll get you lucky was explaining you know it was nothing personal he goes but man i've got a reputation to uphold so that was the reason that he decided to put on the fight but once we got in the car and got out of the neighborhood he had no motivation i guess you would say to keep up appearances as being this ultra violent gangster or maybe he was just tired but we uh we drove over to the jail and he said he was very curious which a lot of them are he was very curious how i was able to track him down so there was a story that i had come up with early on i, I don't know why it just it was humorous to me i said well you remember that last time you're in prison and you went into the infirmary and you had that problem with your tooth complete guess i had no idea whether the guy had ever been seen by a doctor or dentist or anything in prison he goes yeah yeah, yeah, I had a really bad cavity and it was hurting. And uh, I said, well, you know, when they when they fix that tooth, they put a tracking device inside the tooth. So that's how I found you. And of course, he started laughing. Now, I won't say Lucky turned out to be a, a good old guy, but Lucky and I drove over to the jail and got him checked in. Well, that's the mostly true story of how the Shaddy Masseuse helped me get Lucky. If you like this story and want to hear some more, throw a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe. I appreciate you stopping by.